Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today the Lord wants to share with us additional insight into how the false prophet will enter the world stage with the evil agenda of a one-world religion. First, let's take a look at St. Malachi's Pope Prophecy, which he wrote back in 1139 A.D. He was born in Ireland in 1094, and St. Malachi became a Catholic priest and later an archbishop. Several miracles have been attributed to him, and he is known today for a set of prophecies concerning the future line of popes. His list started with his contemporary, Pope Celestine III, and continued through the next 112 popes. The last pope would be called Peter the Roman, whose reign would end with Judgment Day. Malachi's visions and dreams of the future included a brief description of each pope. According to tradition, Malachi's prophecy remained hidden until 1590, when it was first published. It has been a source of controversy ever since. The prophecy came back into focus again because of the resignation of Pope Benedict XVI. According to St. Malachi's vision, Pope Francis I will be the last. Here are the five final popes, along with their description, according to Malachi. Pope Paul VI, or the Flower of Flowers. Pope Juan Pablo I, or of the Half Moon. Pope John Paul II, or from the Toil of the Sun. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, or the Glory of the Olive, and our current Pope, Pope Francis the First, or Peter the Roman. The prophecy of Saint Malachi concerning the final Pope is as follows, and I quote: In the final persecution of the Holy Roman Church. There will reign Peter the Roman, who will feed his flock amid many tribulations, after which the seven-hilled city will be destroyed, and the dreadful judge will judge the people. End quote. According to Malachi, the final pope will take the title Pope Peter the Roman. The Apostle Peter was the first Pope, and St. Malachi prophesied that another Peter will be the final one. The persecution and the destruction of Rome in Malachi's prophecy have led some to believe that the final Pope will be the false prophet mentioned in Revelation 13, 11-15, which reads, Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf, and it made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. It ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast, who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. Jesus began speaking, My people, trust my words written in Daniel, Revelation, and Zechariah, and my true prophets, as you will know them by their fruits and feel the confirming movement of the Holy Spirit. 
You have many questions, Elizabeth, swirling around in your mind right now about the false prophet. Be still, little one, and I will speak to this. He comes from the pit of hell and is entirely consumed by Satan, who has given him all the demonic powers of darkness to command. He will be thrust upon this world and stand beside the Antichrist, doing his bidding. The false prophet will come like a lamb with soothing, empathetic words to persuade and deceive you. Do not fall for his treachery and teachings. He will be like an ambassador of goodwill, appealing to you by being a calming yet convincing voice for others. Remember, dear ones, he speaks like a dragon. His demonically empowered words are of Satan. The false prophet's mission is clear, to get you to follow and worship the beast. It grieves me to think of the souls who will be enamored by these unholy ones and willingly go along with their beliefs. They will be mesmerized by the miraculous signs and wonders that will be performed. People will fall before this evil in adoration of their power, which tears at my very heart. Souls living during this time of tribulation will be faced with either refusing to worship the image of the beast and be subject to death, or worship the beast and incur the wrath of God. I am asking my faithful warriors to pray against the devil's deception, that my truth will be revealed to their minds and hearts, that the unsaved will hearken to my voice and follow me. And that was the end of his message. Our rhema this morning was about Father Seraphim, who devoted great time interceding in prayer for souls in spiritual distress. He attached great importance to the intercession for lost souls. It took precedence over everything. Amen.